the euro, I think, is is very important uh, for a lot of um, a lot of reasons. But the fact that it is only an electronic currency is is definitely a a serious problem, and I think a threat to mankind in general. Because if they get away with this without issuing currency, uh, then other governments are going to look at it and as a means of collecting you know, higher percentages of taxation. If they can eliminate the cash, you eliminate the underground, and I think we're all going to be dead at that point. Um, <clears throat> the single interest rate um, is also, I think, something to watch in Europe. Um, the interest rate issue, I think, is going to be very important. Uh, right now, everyone has converged to uh, achieve the um, adopting the interest rates that Germany had, which were effectively at the 3% level. Um, and we've heard a lot of, of, you know, some press headlines saying, oh, the euro has, has surpassed the dollar in issues, uh, debt issues for the first month. Uh, I would say absolutely, of course. We've been recommending to all our clients that these people out there are buying euros. They're not looking at credit ratings. So we're advising our clients to issue as much as you can and, and possibly euros at this point. They're just buying them like Internet stocks. So uh, it's a great place to, to lay, uh, to increase your debt, take it in at 3%, and I'd recommend that basically for anybody. Um, the single interest rate will not last for long. Eventually, these guys are going to figure out, wait a minute, there is something else that's called credit ratings. Um, in the United States, Canada, we all have to, our individual states and provinces. They're all issued in single currencies. But each province and each state pays a different interest rate depending upon its credit rating. Um, it's absolutely political lunacy to think that we're going to be able to see single interest rates maintained in Europe. Um, each country has retained the ability and right to be its own sovereign nation, which means there's no fiscal uh, budget over any of them. So it's the the real implications of the euro, it would be as if we took all of Latin America and Central America, U.S. and Canada, and said, okay, fine, we're all going to use uh, U.S. dollars and everybody can print whatever they need. Great system. That's basically what's happened in Europe. You have 11 countries that all have the legal right to print euros, to issue debt in euros. There's no central government. Um, to restrict the, the uh, issue of euros, all there is is a gentleman's agreement that if you go beyond the um, proposed limits, there is a, a fine. Now, if you're already strapped for cash, you're printing euros because you don't have the money, now they want to come in and fine you a few billion dollars more, how do you pay the fine? Besides that question, you also say, well, okay, fine, if somebody is really uh, violating this gentleman's agreement on a regular basis, well, then they have the right to kick them out of the EMU. That's fine. So now they're kicked out of the EMU. Now they don't have any obligations to pay the euros back at all. So I don't know exactly how they <clears throat> have tried to come up with this plan. Um, perhaps after a few nights of, of very, very heavy drinking, I guess. But it is clearly, a, um, you can see it's a, a patchwork of, yeah, we want to have a single economy, but nobody can agree and nobody wants to give up their individual independence. So therefore, okay, we'll have a single currency and we'll try and you know, stick together in this boat um, and see if it works. So, <clears throat> What we're really looking at here is that amongst the large institutions that we um, advise, I mean, they're beginning to wake up and say, wait a minute, um, okay, fine, yeah, euros definitely have some in our portfolio. But there is no federal issue of euros that you can say competes against U.S. government bonds or Canadian government bonds. It's still each individual country. So what's happening is, is that um, the large institutions that we have as clients are basically saying they're not changing their asset allocations. Um, 
despite what's being said in the press. They will still value euros uh, issued by Germany and Holland much uh, with better regard than those coming from Portugal, Portugal, Spain, or Italy. So the natural flows of capital and what will be bought and sold will show that there's a higher demand for um, German bonds issued in euro than you will find for Italian bonds. So consequently, what you'll end up with is uh, the interest rates going back to a, um, a spread. And you'll end up with uh, the differences largely on price. So the single interest rate in, in Europe is, is going to be a very um, interesting dilemma. Because once the interest rate starts to crack, then you, uh, that has been used as the sole political excuse as to why they need a euro. Um, I did an interview in Spain, and um, the guy said to me, he says, oh, well, you're just an American bearish in Europe. And I said, well, explain the difference to me between the ERM, which is the old European uh, fixed exchange rate system where each country locked its currency against each other, and the new uh, EMU. He said, oh, the difference is we all get the same interest rate. So everybody seems to be hanging their hat on this issue. And I said, have you ever spoken to anybody that worked on the bond desk? And he said, well, no, why should I? All they ever speak to are the politicians. And the politicians keep saying, well, this is the way it's going to work. Anybody that's ever worked on the bond desk knows that there is you know, what you call credit risk. Um, and one state, we've got 50 states in the US, they all do not pay the same interest rate. They all issue in the same currency, big deal. Russia issued its debt in U.S. dollars as well. Did that mean it was guaranteed by the U.S. government? There's a lot of debt that's issued in, in dollars. It doesn't mean anything. And the same thing with the euro. It will eventually settle right back down to the way the rest of the world works, and that's credit ratings. So once the credit ratings start to, to um, impact here, and the interest rates begin to diverge, um, I think you're going to begin to see um, some serious questions arise out of the euro because the average guy on the street has been told the reason you're doing this is to get the lower interest rates. Now, if the interest rates start going back up in the various different economies that are not as well equipped as those, in, for example, in Germany and Holland, then you're going to have to start saying, well, gee, why am I paying higher taxes now? And now I'm also going to be paying higher interest rates. What did I get out of this deal? So the next four years is, is going to be an interesting period for the euro, and it's, it's certainly not um, something that is going to be uh, an easy road um, in the least. 